Welcome to the Weekly Market Wrap-Up, I'm Hannah Bernard. It was a crazy week in the equities markets with stocks jumping up on Wednesday after the much anticipated Fed announcement that QE tapering would indeed go ahead and much earlier than expected. Is this now the end of the bad news is the good news era? U.S. equity markets had a mixed performance on Thursday with the S&P 500 and the Nasdaq pulling back slightly from Wednesday's euphoric rise after the Federal Reserve finally announced a taper to their controversial quantitative easing program with a reduction in its bond buying program from $85 billion per month to $75 billion. In contrast, the Dow Jones inched forward, closing up at a record 16,179 points. Turning to Canadian stock markets, the TSX recovered from a horrible week last week to end this week up 270 points, closing at 13,392. The TSX Venture Exchange had an up and down week, however, finishing off with a little movement from last week, closing on Thursday at 887 points, which was a one point gain. The question now for the markets is how will the Fed taper affect performance moving forward? Even with the run-up yesterday, and it was a great day, what we advocated is the taper is a good thing for the market. Uh, it's based on good economic data. The Fed finally acknowledged that, and, and investors that have been hesitant missed a really nice rally, but it's not too late to get it. So it's clear some analysts are very bullish moving into 2014. However, it's important to note that while the front end of monetary policy did change in the form of a taper, the back end of zero interest rates stayed the same. Also, it's likely that the short-term Fed funds will remain low for the foreseeable future to avoid upsetting a delicate balance in the economy. Let's turn now to precious metals, which took a devastating hit as gold dropped below the $1,200 mark for the first time in three years. Confidence in the stock market, as well as leading economic indicators trending up in recent months, suggest a lack of desire for investors to seek safe haven assets. Silver took the sharpest hit of all on the percentage basis, down 2.68%. Unlike gold, silver did not hit a multi-year low and on a trough-to-trough -trough basis has been trending up since July, a possible indication of industrial demand kicking in. Finally, palladium avoided the bear tsunami that affected the precious metals complex, with Thursday's session ending at parity with the prior day's trade. Strong industrial demand, particularly in the automotive sector, has kept palladium afloat and is easily the best performing precious metal of 2013. All right, it's time for winners and losers and our picks for the week. The winner for this week is Callaway Golf Company, ticker symbol ELY. Shares jumped up over 7% and has been performing strongly this week based on a much anticipated product lineup for 2014, as well as optimistic forward guidance that expects fiscal year 2013 to be the first since 2008 where positive annual earnings are posted. The loser for this week is Winnebago Industries Inc, ticker symbol WGO. Shares dropped over 13.5% after a conference call revealed strong company earnings were based off of less than expected revenue performance. CEO Randy Potts declared that Winnebago was focused on keeping costs low while continuing to grow its business. That's enough about this week. Let's turn now to BayStreet.ca's look at the week ahead and a snapshot of what analysts are forecasting for companies whose earning reports are coming out next week. It's a light week with Christmas falling in the middle, so here are five U.S. stocks to watch. First up is CalAmp Corp with their earnings report coming out on Monday with an EPS forecast of 19 cents. CalAmp is a California-based provider of wireless products, services and solutions, which last month threw in its lot with MyTac Digital, maker of the Magellan brand GPS devices. Next up on Tuesday is Franklin Financial Services with an EPS forecast around $1.22. This Ohio-based lender in business for the last 60 years occupies the upper end of a 52-week price range of $13.80 to $18. We have two companies to watch on Thursday. First up is Razor Resources. This China-based exploration stage is a company all about the acquisition and exploration of mineral claims and properties. Its stock price seems to shout penny stock in big letters, 
for its 52-week range has covered ground from two cents to the not much higher three cents. Earnings reports are elusive, but during the holiday season here in the West, Razor gets its chance to shine from the East. Next on Thursday is Grizzly Gold. This Reno-based company has ranged in stock price from 5.4 cents to $1.10 over the last 52 weeks. Finally on Friday, it's MVC Capital's turn with an EPS forecast of one cent. In October, the New York-based company declared a fourth quarter dividend of 13.5 cents per share. MVC recently announced the sale of its investment in U.S. gas and electric could cause a material increase in MVC's dividends to shareholders. The stock trades in the middle of a 52-week range of $11.68 to $14.57. And that wraps it up. Thanks again so much for joining us for another weekly market wrap-up. Make sure to watch for us next Friday and join us for our year-end review special. For Viral Network News, cross the street and baystreet.ca, happy holidays.